Find the equation of the conic with center 0, 0, vertex negative 5, 0, and eccentricity equal to 3. Solution. So we know that the eccentricity is equal to 3, and that's bigger than 1, so that means we have a hyperbola. So whenever the eccentricity is bigger than 1, we have a hyperbola. Now in these types of problems where we have to find the equation given some information, it's always a good idea to draw a little picture as it usually helps us figure out the problem. So in this problem, the center is 0, 0. Right? Center 0, 0. The vertex is negative 5, 0. So here's negative 5. And this is a hyperbola. So the vertices actually lie on the hyperbola. So the other vertex is over here. So because the vertices lie on the hyperbola and we know that the center is 0, 0, our hyperbola has to look something like this. And what's useful about this is that it tells us that this hyperbola opens left and right. And because it opens left and right, the x comes first. So this is x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. If it had opened up and down, then it would be y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equal to 1. So if it opens left and right, the x comes first. If it opens up and down, the y comes first. Okay, so what else do we have? We have the vertex, we've written that down. So this distance is a, always, no matter what, in the hyperbola. And so this distance is 5. So a is equal to 5. That's important because we needed a for our equation. We just have to find b. So it looks like we're going to go back and use the eccentricity one more time. The eccentricity is equal to 3. It's also equal to C over A. It's a formula for the eccentricity of both a hyperbola and an ellipse. It's always C over A. And we know something about A. It's 5. So this is C over 5. And if we multiply both sides by 5, we end up with C equals 15. Now we have C. We still don't have B. So what we will do is use an equation that relates a, b, and c. It's c squared equals a squared. And the trick to figure out the sign here is that it's always the opposite of whatever you see here. So this is a minus. That makes this a plus, And then we have our b squared. c was 15, so we get 15 squared. a is 5, so we get 25 plus b squared. And 15 squared is 225. Here we have 25, and then plus b squared. Subtracting 25, we end up with b squared equal to 200. So we have b squared. We have a, so we have that a squared is 25. And now all we have to do is plug our numbers into our equation, and we are done. So the final answer will be x squared over 25 minus y squared over 200 equal to 1. And that's it. I hope that made sense.